Hello my viewers. This handy little gadget right here is what saves a lot of aggravation trying to get them hubs off, off of a dead motor uh, shaft. And uh, you know of course this is great for the hubs that you'll have to uh, deal with on uh, um, the blower wheels and, and fan blades too. Okay here's the fan blade that I want to remove right here. Um, this first of all of course you always have to sand the shaft on the old motor. Uh, and there we have it. Now it's ready for a little lubrication. Here's the oil that I'm using nowadays. This doesn't smell quite as bad as some of the weasel pisses out there. It's called Aero Croil. It's um, for some really good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put some oil on that shaft. Stuff really creeps in there really good. Then, as usual, I'm going to uh, remove the uh, nut that holds the hub into place on the shaft. Just take the whole thing off like that. Now here's a little uh, tool that I just bought from uh, Johnstone Supply. It's a uh, really uh, handy one to have. If you saw my other barred motor uh, video, you'll remember that I used to use a wrench to remove the uh, hub off of the shaft on the, on the dead motor. Well, I got a little something to make my life easier. And it's a hub puller that I picked up at Johnstone Supply. Um, this is good for a lot of different hubs. You can take notice that there's a little message here on the hub puller. It says clean and lubricate motor shaft before using puller. Alright, the first thing you want to do is make sure that this screw right here is up and inside of the chambers so that you can put the entire hub puller over the hub and uh, make sure that this will be on top of where the shaft is sitting. Then you can tighten these screws right here. There's an Allen wrench that comes with this kit that will allow you to tighten these set screws onto the hub. Just kind of make them snug. That would be all three of them. Like this. Alright, now that I have the hub puller fastened onto the hub real nice and tight, then I can turn this screw in. In many cases you'll need to use a uh, wrench of some sort to turn the, uh, the screw and here it goes. I'm turning the, the screw and at the same time the hub is actually coming off. Sometimes I can just do this by hand really easy and the uh, hub will come off the uh, shaft real easy anyway. Okay, it's, and there it is. Okay, that was pretty easy. Sometimes it can be a little more difficult, but this hub puller sure makes it a lot easier. Also, I want to answer a question regarding pressure switches that have a differential setting on them. Okay, this, for example, is a low pressure switch. I've already taken the cover. Uh, this, of course, is where the pressure switch will connect to somewhere on the suction line. 
And anyway, now right now, to give you an example, I have this set up, the um, 40 PSI G, okay? And the differential, as you can see, is at about 20. If you read this, see this switch, it says switch low event is high event minus the differential. So the reality is, is what you do is you take your high event, which right now I have it set at 40, and you take the differential, which right now is at 20, you subtract the differential from the high event, which will give you the PSIG where it'll actually trip out. And if you might, if you subtract 20 from 40, it gives you a 20. So that means that right now, the way this is up as a low pressure switch, if the pressure were to drop down to 20 PSIG, the uh, this switch would open and uh, drop out the uh, uh, control voltage of the compressor.